New Image Media presents the NFHS Game of the Week. Brought to you by Crossroads Ford. Big city deals from a dealer with a hometown feel. It's my favorite time of the year. Football is back. I would like to personally invite you to come down for your next new or pre-owned vehicle purchase. With one of the largest new and pre-owned inventories in the area, come see us today for discounts that the competition simply can't match or beat. You drive in Sanford, why not buy in Sanford? Come see me, the deal maker. Come and get that big town deal with that small town feel right here at Crossroads Ford in Sanford. Welcome to Cameron, North Carolina. I'm Krista Lambert. This is Nathan Cochran. We are here with the NFHS Game of the Week as the Union Pines Vikings play host to the Lee County Yellow Jackets. This is the ball game in this conference this weekend, Nate. Absolutely. We, we've talked about from the beginning of the year that this Union Pines Lee County high school game would probably decide the conference championship. So here we are tonight, a brisk night here in Cameron, North Carolina. I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, we spent last weekend here as uh, Union Pines managed to get by Harnett Central in a big, big win for them. Um, we talked at length for folks that, that tuned in as to what Union Pines was going to try to do and what they were able to do. And what we've seen from Union Pines so far is a team that loves to throw the tunnel screen. Um, they try to get deep with their receivers. Ahmad Jones, keep your eye on him, number 44. And number 14, the freshman phenom, Ethan Biggs, one of the leading receivers in the state of North Dude, Carolina, which is guy. bananas. Uh, junior quarterback Micah Monahan leads the offense. You'll see Kashawn Davis in the running game. And you got to think that Union Pines is going to run the ball a little bit more than we've seen because they're going to have to keep this Yellow Jacket defense honest. Um, on defense, Josh Berkey, number 57, a middle linebacker. He's a playmaker, um, turned into one of my favorite high school football players this year really quickly. Lee County High School, they're going to do what they do. We know that. You know, they, I don't want to say they're predictable, but they're very comfortable and very good at what they do. That offense led by number 12, Will Patterson, junior quarterback, following Colin Johnson in this year, has done a very good job, thrown for two touchdowns, 234 yards on the season. His, some of his weapons are number two, Tyreek McKendall, Caught for 129 and a uh, touchdown. We've talked about him since his freshman year. He is one of the most explosive athletes that we'll get to see anytime soon. On their defense, the, the standout, the guy who no one really knew about two years ago, number 34, T.J. Johnson, coming in on the season with 18 tackles and not three but two ball games. They had a ball game canceled uh, or rescheduled. Uh, against Triton, so coming in 18 tackles in two ball games, that is doing something. Yeah, you pick T.J. Johnson as the playmaker on that defense, but you could you could anoint any one of five or six players. Um, I think a guy that's going to play a pivotal, pivotal role on that defense tonight is Jackson Lamb, the senior safety. Um, he's going to have to keep that secondary discipline and uh, watch for that screen because that's where Union Pines will try to get guys into space, particularly Biggs, but also yep. Jones. If Lee County plays the screen well from the secondary, it's going to be tough sledding for Union Pines. Now, if you let Biggs and Jones get into space and hurt you, could be real interesting. Could be real interesting. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the National Anthem. This has been the Crossroads Ford pregame show. All right, we'll see you on the other side of the break with some football. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Wilkinson Chevy Cadillac Buick GMC welcomes you to the NFHS Network Game of the Week. Brought to you by New Image Media. All right, Lee County will kick off in the white. Union Pines moving from left to right across your screen in the dark blue uniforms tonight. Lee County kicking off with number, number 10, Kennedy Hernandez. Not a team that kicks it deep often, and there's a quick little spinner. It's going to hit the ground, cause trouble. All right. 
Uh, scramble for it, and looks like Union Pine gets to it. Now, Union Pine's led by head coach Lonnie Cox, um, who is unapologetically an offensive first coach. <laughs> um, Union Pines last year, when he took over the program, really was impressive. They were exciting on offense. This year, it's a, a lot of changes across at the skill positions, and it's, I mean, it's indisputable. The defense is ahead of the offense right now. Um, we'll see if this is the week that Union Pines gets it going. Union Pines coming out in a doubles formation, trying to draw Lee County off, giving them a hard count. Well, what's interesting about this lineup is this is a different form. We did not see this formation one time last week against Harnett Central. Uh, and Ooh, it's a high snap, snap, and that's not a, the type of – and that's going to be – well, they're scrambling for it all the way back at the 13. Even if Union Pines comes out of there with it, they're way behind the chains. Loss of 20 on the play. Oh, Union Pines quarterback Monahan looking around, looking confused, have to wonder if there was a miscommunication there yeah, we'll, between his center and himself. We'll call it a loss of 19, Woo. and that's an unforced error. What I was saying about the formation, against Harnett Central, we saw Biggs, number 14, and, and Jones, number 44, on opposite sides of the formation every single play. Um, they come out with both of those guys out left, looking for Biggs. He's got it. Makes one man miss, and he gets to the sideline, and he'll pick up about half of what they needed to get back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third and 17. You see a little bit of the promise with Biggs right there. This young man is exciting with the ball in his hand. We talked all last week, you know, get that boy the ball in space, put him on a wheel route to the wide side, let him go do something miraculous there. We just saw a little spurt of greatness right then. We did, and I'm going to be interested to see if Lee County gives one guy the responsibility with 14, and it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're just going to line up and play it straight. All right, Monahan, big play early in the game, throws a little screen. That's going backwards to Jones, and he loses a bunch. All the way back at the 15, Lee County sniffed that out. And when you're, when you got very few dimensions in the offense, that's uh, that's the kind of thing that'll happen. And Lee County playing downhill. And that is something that Lee County sees every day, day in and day out at practice. They they like the tunnel themselves, so that that's a familiar play to the defense. Well, well done. In, in degrees of like it themselves, they barely are on the radar <laughs> when, when compared to Union Pines. All right, here's the punt. Lee County bringing pressure, get close, and almost run into the punter. Good, great bounce for Union Pines. Riding the, riding the sideline it's there. It's going to roll all the way down just about the 37-yard line, and the Lee County Yellow Jackets will take it first and 10 there. Junior quarterback Will Patterson leads the Jackets out on the field. Will's been the, been the uh, quarterback in waiting the last couple of years. There was, there was no doubt who was going to succeed. Colin Johnson and all of his records when Johnson moved on. Uh, Patterson with a little bit of up and down so far. Um, hasn't lit it up, but really has only had one game to showcase his skills. We'll explain that in a minute. Patterson drops on first down, throwing the screen, and has Tyrick McKendall, who's stacked up, and they do a good job bringing him down because that's a lot of man out there wearing Absol that number two jersey. Absolutely. Oops. Patterson, even, even, even himself coming into the quarterback, Coming in at 6'3", 203. That is a big young man. Oh. Sorry, guys. We're having some uh, wind issues. Lee County's going to line up in trips to the wide side. Hand the ball off for inside read. Ball is being carried by number four, 34, T.J. Patterson. Toting the rock for a yellow jacket first down. That's T.J. Johnson. T.J. Johnson, sorry. There's a Patterson and Johnson on the field, so you were cool. <laughs> T.J. Johnson, T.J. Johnson. T.J. probably put on 25, maybe 30 pounds this offseason. He was already a stout young man. He gets to start at running back. You'll see a, 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 an array of running backs for Lee County. Lee County back out in the trips formation. Patterson looking down the right sideline for McKendall again and just overthrows him. McKendall had a step on Ahmad Jones doing double duty out there at corner tonight. That's going to be an interesting matchup throughout the night. I'd anticipate seeing uh, Mr. Ahmad Jones and Mr. Tyreek Kendall lined up against each other throughout the evening. They both play both sides of the ball pretty consistently. Well, they do. However, you're going to see McKendall play fewer snaps, and that may have a bearing later in the game. McKendall checks out, as a matter of fact, after that play. 
Patterson with the hard count. Johnson still in at tailback. The hand is to Johnson, who gets upfield, running through tackles. Going to be close to a first down and will have it by a yard. 11 on the carry for Johnson. We talked about this in the pregame show, Chris. I think we're going to see there for a little while. Lee County's going to keep the Union Pines defense honest. But I think we're going to see a lot of line up, run a gap, and see what happens. You look at the offensive line here of the Yellow Jackets, they are much bigger than the defensive line of the, of the Vikings. All right, Patterson from the gun drops. Rolls, looking down the right side. He's got a man wide Blown open. The coverage. coverage there. And brought down just short of the goal line, Eli Garrison. And a blown coverage there. They lost track of number three. Looked like Lee County, they either faked the screen or had the screen set up and it got blown up. But uh, in, in covering the screen, they Union Pines allowed Garrison behind them. Good job by Patterson to find him. And they're set up first and goal inside the Zaxby's red zone. T.J. Johnson up the middle. That was too easy. Ooh, that is a Yellow Jacket. Touchdown. Yes, sir. Six to nothing quickly for Lee County. Not a whole lot of resistance from Union Pines on that and opening drive. The the Looks like Lee County is lining up. County yeah, they're going to do this little swinging gate thing. <laughs> you got to love it. And, and now they will do this. You see a lot of teams do this and look for an opportunity. If it's, in, if it's close and they have the numbers, they'll do it. They don't, and they'll get into a normal formation. And Ignacio Hernandez, junior kicker, will look to tack on the extra point. Hold is down, kick is up, good. And the Jackets are out to a 7-0 lead early. We'll take a quick break and see if Union Pines can answer after the, after the commercial. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. Check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com or call us at 919-842-3322. We guarantee we're the place to be at Wilkinson Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. We are professional grade. Welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina with the NFHS Game of the Week brought to you by Wilkinson Cadillac Chevrolet. That Wilkinson facility is beautiful. We it talked is. about it last week. It is, and we will be back there on Monday night as they host the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Monday at 7 o'clock, you can tune in, SanfordTV.live. Yellow Jackets kicking off with num number 10, Kennedy Hernandez, back at him. Got a feeling we might be seeing this a lot tonight. Yeah. All right, there's another one of those spinners. That one's going to get to the ground, too. And Union Pines... Does a good job getting to that one. A little cleaner than the last time. They'll take over first and 10 at the 32. Monaghan leads the offense back out. They've got to sustain a drive. Um, Lee County with, a, with an enormous size advantage on the defense on the offensive line versus that uh, Viking defense. And a couple of three and outs in a row. And that offensive line starts leaning on them a little bit. It could, get, it, could, it could wear them out. Absolutely. All right. So we'll see what Coach Cox and his offense have in store here. Monaghan. Barking out signals, takes a snap, and ball's ball on, on the ground, ground again, and that's picked up, and it's going the other way for a touchdown. That's Rodney Ingram, number 42. Let's go, Rodney. Rodney, a, a previous athlete of mine at Southern Lee. What a scoop and score there by the young man. And that is not Rodney Ingram. Rodney's wearing 22 tonight. I don't have a 42 in the book. Nor do I. Well, we apologize to whoever that young man is. Not Rodney Ingram. Diego Guevara. There we go. The uh, PA announcer apparently has more updated records than we do. We'll have to talk to the uh, Lee County yeah. communication staff. Yeah. All right, Lee County, 13-0. You know, and I, you, you know you've, you've been a coach for a, a, a significant part of your adult life. Doing something gimmicky like that on an extra point, once you've seen that the opposition knows how to cover that, 
Why do you continue to do it? I mean, if they knew how to line up against it once, <laughs> aren't they going to know the next time? Or am I missing something? You know, you're just I, lulling them to sleep. I, and, I think that's exactly okay. what it is. You're kind of lulling them. You're, you're waiting for them to get lazy, and then all of a sudden, boom, you pop it for two. All right, 14 to nothing here in Cameron. Lee, Jack, Lee County and Yellow Jackets on top. We'll take a quick break. Be back with the kickoff. Sanford.com or call 1-855-461-9595. Classic Nissan Sanford. Welcome back to the NFL. Welcome back to the NFHS game of the week. Lee County, the Yellow Jackets up 14 to nothing real quick on the home Union Pines Vikings. And interesting that Rocky Like Hurricane's playing right now because all week we were told we were getting hurricane-like weather yesterday and uh, no dice. Instead, we just got really cold weather, and there's an onside kick that's picked and up by Lee County, and this yellow is jacket not ball. good for UP. Yeah. That was one of those new style. I think Ohio State was the first team I ever saw that where they almost kick it as a pass yep. to somebody flashing down the uh, down the sideline, and and you see that from both the Lee County schools. I think Don Simon, when he was there at Southern, started that, but Lee County started doing the same thing. You're never going to get a straight down the field, you know kicking it down to the 5, 10-yard line and give you a chance to return. They'll do every manner of onside and, and anything to mess you up. Absolutely. Don Simon and his uh, special teams coach, Joe Allison, both kickers at the collegiate level, were dynamic in the special teams. All right, looking for McKendall. has got a step and hauls it in and is going to drag it all the way down. They're going to mark him out at about the 10, 9-yard line by the time they quit walking. McKendall got behind the defense. Uh, had he been led inside just another foot or two, Probably be standing in the end zone, but instead it'll be first and goal inside the Zaxby's red zone. It's a Pinto first down. They're coming too quick for me. Man. I just can't handle it. Union Pines still sticking in that cover one man underneath. We're going to have to wonder if they can make an adjustment pretty quick. That's two big throws in a row. Patterson back to the air again and just tries to get rid of it. Throw oh, and big oof. mistake. I tell you, big mistake and a, good, a bit of good fortune for Lee County. That was Ahmad Jones, the wide receiver, that hauled that in and never got going the other way. He might, he might have run for a while. Absolutely, absolutely. He had a lot of green grass. He just couldn't keep his foot in, footing underneath him. But uh, two unforced errors for Union Pine so far, really three if you figure the, uh, the muffed onside kick. And now Lee County commits their first unforced error of the night. Bad decision by Patterson. You'd love to have that one back. All right, Monaghan, this is a tight set here. And Rose, pressure's coming. Pressure's coming. Gets it out. He's got bigs. Big with some more room to work. He's out across the 40, or out across the 35, close to the 40, before he's forced out of bounds. Good first down from play call from Coach Lonnie Cox and the Union Pines Vikings. Coach Giggy, the offensive coordinator there, drummed up a tight double set with a roll and a crossing route, caught Biggs in, in the flats and just rolled with it. Well, not sure if that was a designed roll or if the pressure caused that, but one way or the other, good throw on the run by Monaghan. And now they're back to, to more of what you expect from a formation. Biggs and Jones both wide left, looking for Biggs, and Biggs never got his head around. That one, the pressure came right up the middle a little bit faster than I think anybody anticipated, and that'll be second and 10. That was a quick three-step three, three step slant there from about 12 out, coming back to eight. Just couldn't connect. Yeah, we saw Biggs last week. Biggs does a lot of things well, but he is a freshman, and we saw him a couple of times uh, struggle to get his head around and locate the football, and that time just never got his head around, never had a chance. Wasn't a great throw in the first place. All right, Monahan from the gun. Fakes to Davis, throws it, and has got Jones. Jones one-on-one, -on -one, makes a man miss, and he's going to run for a while. Jack All the way down inside the 35 to the 32. Ahmad Jones with a doggone Pinta first down. Good pitch and catch there. Lee Cowling, I'm still trying to figure out what, what zone coverage they're in here, but they're, they're Union Pines finding the holes and getting them exposed pretty quick. That was a, a 
Good tackle there by Mr. Jackson Lamb, who probably is outweighed by 60 pounds, I bet, at least on Mr. Ahmad Jones. Well, I talked to Coach Cox this week, and he told me that Jones put on about 20 pounds. And there's to Jones again, and he's going to push forward, picks up about three on the play. Second and seven coming up. Jones isn't built like your typical high school wide receiver. Built like a fire hydrant. Uh, but I tell you what, you, you see the damage he can do in the secondary because uh, he's still got a little bit of make you miss, and if you're not careful, he'll run over you. Uh -huh. he, he's got the build of a fullback. He yes, doesn't sir. have the build of a wide receiver. Well, I remember seeing him the last couple of years in this offense, assuming that his, his future was at tailback. And uh, he's played, we, we've gone through almost a game and a half now. Kishon Davis on the carry, and he's doing damage, has a first down just outside the 20. And that'll be a Pente first down for Union Pines as they keep this drive going. This is what Union Pines needed after they dug themselves a 14-0 hole. Good open field tackle there by Lee County's number one, Kenyon Palmer, on the, on the um, tackle there, outside linebacker. Don't have many stats on him. But, nonetheless, good open field tackle. Yeah, Kashawn Davis there, number 33 for Union Pines. You see, good quality back. Quality back. Does a little bit of everything. He can get you in the passing game. Not going to blow past you, but he he's fast enough. There's Biggs in the middle of the field, down inside the 10, running through the line. Ethan Biggs just right outruns everybody. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that is a freshman. <laughs> He got that in the exact same three-step three, three step slant that we were talking about earlier. Got his hand turned, caught it in space. Lee County in that deep zone there gave Biggs a, a crease and made it happen. Well, Union Pine suddenly able to find both Jones and Biggs in space on that drive and did what they wanted to do. The extra point could cut this in half. Well, nope, all of that's coming off. Did oh, you see the flag? I did not see the flag. Did they have a legal man downfield? How do you have an illegal man downfield in a three-yard slant? Wow. You don't have enough time to get your bigs downfield. That was quick. Whoa. That was quick. We're going to have to replay that at some point in time and look <laughs> at that. I don't know if I believe that one, White Hat. That was quick. Generally, you'll see a man get downfield when, the, when, you, when you're looking at a broken field and, and a quarterback scrambling around, somebody trying to go downfield and throw a block to – to have one out of a design, I mean, that was a three-step <laughs> drop. I don't, I don't get it. All right, Monahan, Paul's tipped, can't get it to Biggs. And after what looked like a touchdown, we'll have second and 15. You want to explain the rule to people at home? Sure. So, illegal man downfield, when your quarterback is, is working on a pass, is throwing a pass, a offensive lineman, one of your front five on the line, uh, you have to have seven line up, five have to be on line, and cannot go past three yards the line of scrimmage till the ball has been thrown. Those are some athletic linemen that not only started to move up the field, but got three yards down the field <laughs> as quickly as he hit Biggs. That one's thrown up there. Ooh, Oof, they got big interference. Two flags come in. Number 81, Damian Albrooks who was where Monaghan was looking. That's a big young man, 6'5", big target. You'll see him on both sides <laughs> of the ball. And, you know, all you need to know about his athleticism is he plays corner. And you don't see a whole lot of young men at 6'5", playing corner. No, during his actual coaching show this past week, I heard you talk to the defensive coordinator. Jason Trosdale was, was kind enough to stop by. Yeah, I heard him. Y'all were talking about this this young man. There's two of them, he told me. Yes. He told you at 6'5", in corner. That is unheard of. Well, Albrook's. They've got this officiating crew, the cold and the wind's getting to them too. They walk it all the way back. Now they're going to mark this off. Well, we talked about it last week. One thing that we also love coming down here to Union Pines of Cameron, North Carolina, miked officials. Yes, sir. One of the many, many things that is amazing about coming down here. <laughs> it is. Second and two, two and a half maybe. All right, Monahan. Union Pines got to cash in here. Taking late signals from the sideline. Monahan moves Davis to the right. Two wide right. Jones all along on his left. He gets it out there to him. He's going to have the first down. Oh, first down. And he'll be down near the five-yard line before he's forced out of bounds. That'll be first and goal for the Vikings. 
the Vikings knocking on the door here in the Zaxby's red zone. Having one call back, you have to cash in for the morale of your team. You can't stutter here. We've seen the kicking game from Union Pines. It was not phenomenal last week. You've got to put up six here. All right, that short passing game, we know Union Pines likes to do. They like to run crossing routes down near the goal line when the, when the uh, safeties come up, as they will in short goal-to-go -go situations like this. There's a timeout on the field. Flag came out, so there's a pre-snap call against somebody. Lee County making substitutions. They're going to get offside, Ooh, so that'll get them offside. That'll get Union Pines a little bit closer. So now the ball will be placed just outside the two-yard line, first and goal there. Now I asked you, Chris, if, if you were an offensive coordinator, where would you put your quarterback on this situation? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt that you even ask. It wouldn't be in a shotgun. And Harnett Central, who we saw down there right in that very same spot, probably lost the ball game because they were in the gun, and, and, and that's that. why you don't and do that. that. <laughs> and I will be giving Lonnie grief over the weekend over that, I promise you. All right, so that'll back them up on the bad snap, and I'm, I promise I'm not going to harp on that today. <laughs> that is two bad snaps from the Union Pine Center to Monahan, and, and here in the first quarter, they got to get that worked out. You can't make mistakes like that against Lee County. No. Expect to win. No, and that one hurts. That takes you takes you back from the two yard line back out to the ten, where to be second and goal. Now, with this style of offense. Having a little bit more space to work with doesn't hurt you that badly. But let's not pretend eight yards is not a big deal. That's trying to get out there to Jones again. Landon Johnson able to get a hand up that. And that's those are some big hands on the end of some long arms on the that are attached to a very long trunk. Landon Johnson runs about 6'5". He says, I think he's closer to 6'6 six, six or 6'7". Six, Landon Johnson, the third of the Johnson boys that we've been broadcasting. The first, Hunter Johnson, was a center for the Yellow Jackets. Then the younger brother, Colin Johnson, who we're all familiar with from, you know, previous years where he lost three or four ball games in his career at <laughs> Lee County High School. And now Landon Johnson. Landon, the junior, has uh, stepped into some big shoes, playing that defensive end spot that was manned by Des Evans. Ethan Biggs, he is, do it again. He is He's in there and gets it all back. No flags. This one's clean. And we have ourselves a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. I know that this had absolutely no bearing on the Unipon Vikings plays, but when I was talking to one of their defensive coaches this week, I said, you got to get that boy the ball in space, and you got to do it quick. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Did you also tell them that uh, the trees were going to be green and the sky was going to be blue? I was, I was dropping knowledge on them. Yeah, yeah knowledge I'm knowledge sure they were very appreciative of that. <laughs> yeah, get Biggs is the ball in space. It's not rocket science. And tackle the opposing ball yeah. carrier. Score more points than the other team. <laughs> <laughs> kick is up. Kick is good. Lead is cut in half. Lee County up 14-7. They'll get the ball back with 418 left to go in the first quarter. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Nissansanford.com or call 1-855-461-9595. Classic Nissan Sanford. Welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina, the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Wilkinson Cadillac. Dropping knowledge on people today there, Crystal <laughs> Lambert. <laughs> yes, sir. On the call, you got the play-by-play, -play, the one, the only, Crystal Lambert. On color commentary, you've got myself, Nathan Cochran. Yep, Tim Co Tim Copus, the executive producer tonight. The and, man, uh, the myth, the legend. Wynn Crazley's the one doing all the work, though, down in the booth. So. And Mr. Terry running all the cameras. Yes. yes Great little good. team we've got it, here. It is not a bad team at all. And Union Pines is particularly accommodating. This is one of our favorite places to go. A lot of places don't know how to respond. What do you mean, you, TV? What do we do with you? I don't know. <laughs> um, now, they do have us up on the roof, so as it gets colder, it's not going to be real comfortable, but... Uh, very hospitable, and, and, and lots of food in the press box, too, oh, yeah. which is not a bad thing. All right, here's the kickoff. High spinner, and 
Fair catch signal for Kenyon Palmer, the first year jacket, fourth year high school football player. Okay. Transfer from Southern Lee. Okay, I was going to ask, explain that to us there, Chris. And I take that back. Kim Palmer is a junior. Palmer's a junior. I thought he was one of the seniors that left out. There were a couple of players that did during the transition. Um, Talking transition, we, we've talked about Rodney Ingram, who was a previous Cavalier, went to the Yellow Jackets. Yes, sir. Quarterback from last week. We incorrectly Cowboys. credited him for a touchdown. T.J. Johnson just bouncing off people. Good gracious. That's like your uncle playing in the backyard, never does touch the ground, picks up <laughs> 11 on the play. But going back to last week, we talked about DeAndre McAllister with the transfer. Quite a few of those Cavalier team teammates from last year are playing on other teams this year. Yeah, which makes what Southern Lee's doing all the more impressive. Uh, McAllister, did we saw with Harnett Central last week playing against here against Union Pines, would have been the starting quarterback for all, you know, unless something crazy had happened. And Palmer would have probably been the number one receiver. Uh, four for T.J. Johnson on the carry. And we've seen uh, T.J.'s gotten all the, the carries so far, not that they've run that many plays. T.J. Johnson going out to get a, get a breather. Coming in is Darion Jennings, middle linebacker, running back. I have him at 14 tackles on the season already for the defensive side of the ball. So let's see what he does with the offensive side. All right, Jennings. Looking, peeking around the right side, and submarine, but gets ahead across the 45 to the 47, third and about four coming up. So we've seen two of the backs, and we've talked about Union Pines and their electric yeah, freshman, Ethan Biggs. Lee County's got one of their own, B.J. Brown, um, number seven. However, we haven't seen him yet, and I'm not sure that he's suited up today. So keep your eyes peeled. I wouldn't give him the heads up by anybody that he wasn't playing tonight, but we shall see. All right, Jennings with a carry. going to be stuffed. Oh, he rolls out. Oh, 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 this is oh, dead. Oh, oh, oh. whistle kills Union Pines, who might have had a touchdown there. Oh, that's a tough break for the, UP. The good heads up tackle there by number 53, Dakota Spangler of the Vikings. I think that whistle was a little quick, it quick. Chris. It was quick, but we did hear it. So they got the call right yep. in terms of whether the whistle had blown or not. But, boy, quick on the whistle, and that uh, that might have taken a touchdown off the board for UP. Instead, they have forced a three and out. And Lee County had and too many men on the field. didn't get a flag out over that too many men on the field, which is curious. Ball bounces at about the 20, rolled dead at the 15. Union Pines will come back out and try and tag another touchdown on the board. So Lee County with a couple fortunate breaks there. First of all, they don't lose the fumble, and then clearly had a player trying to get off the field as the, uh, as the ball was snapped. Uh, ran right by the official who decided he was going to keep his flag in his pockets. That was interesting. So 2.09 left in the first quarter. Not going to lie, this looked like it might get out of hand very quickly. <laughs> and Union Pines, Coach Cox and his staff have, have settled things down. They're starting to make plays. And uh, Lee County on defense isn't stopping what Union Pines is trying to do. Union Pines coming out. Let's see if they can sustain this second drive. There are trips to the wide side here. All right, looking gets it quick. And oh, all out. out. Oh. I tell you what, that's one of those, and they're going to give it to Lee County going the other way. That's one of those, if he had a chance to replay, that was bang-bang as to whether he actually had that. Coach Cox pleading for that to be called incomplete. Not going to get the call, and Damian Albrooks turns it over. Huge play. Tough spot here coming in for Union Pines Vikings, giving Lee County the ball going into the 22, two yards away from that Zaxby's red zone. You know, this defense has showed up pretty well so far this year. You can't be put in bad positions like this, though. No, that was bang, bang. Albrooks got it and put it down pretty quick. All right, pressure coming right up the gut. Patterson gets it out of there, but wide. Lee County in a doubles formation there. Kind of surprised we're not seeing Lee County just line up and pound the ball right now. Really surprised. Really surprised. And it, and it may be, so for folks that don't know, week one, Lee County went on the road to South Granville up north of Raleigh and played in a quagmire and really didn't get an opportunity to do anything on offense except run the ball straight ahead. Then in week two, Overhills gave them a whole lot more than they anticipated and they really didn't get the passing game on track. Um, 
this this is a conference game, so I'm not saying that you're trying to scout their own offense and, and do some things to stretch what they're able to do, uh, and especially if this game tightens up. But they might have come in and said, look, we need to figure out how we're going to how we're gonna attack the passing game. Absolutely. Or via the passing game. All right, we're going to get a timeout from Lee County. They want to talk about it, Coach Steve Burdue and his staff. And we'll take a quick break while they sort it out, and we'll be right back with the rest of the NFHS Game of the Week. Are you ready to sell your home and don't know which realtor to choose? Well, not all realtors are the same. I'm Crystal Copas, and I don't just stick a sign in the yard, throw it in the MLS, and hope to collect a commission. I provide a customized marketing plan that includes professional staging, photography, videography, and drone at no cost to you. Contact me, Crystal Copas, with REMAX Real Estate Service, and let's get your house sold. 919-356-5402 or visit me at crystalcopas.com. Welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina here. Union Pines versus Lee County High School. This game of the week brought to you by Wilkinson Cadillac. Right. Lee County knocking on the door. Oh, it's, oh, oh my goodness. Now, a couple things going on there. T.J. Johnson snuck out of the backfield. He had him wide open and kind of lolly popped it out there instead of zipping the ball out there. Union Pines defender got his hand on it, and that thing bounced around like a volleyball a couple of times and ultimately hits the ground and brings up fourth and nine. No signal that the kicking team's coming out. Lee County going to keep the offense out on the field. Ahmad Jones for Union Pines checking in as Mr. Brett Clemens comes out. This is probably within Hernandez's range. So, up oh, Patterson. Whoa, good defensive stand by the Vikings. Step up and steps right into the pass rush. Taken down on the play by number 53. Dakota Spangler again on that tackle. Spangler is a heck of a ball player. Not the tallest guy in stature, but boy, he can make plays. And uh, Union Pines making plays when they need them right now. Lee County, not so much. If UP can stay out of these unforced errors, they can they can do something here. We could have ourselves a ball game pretty quick. You, you know, we've talked about number 57, Berkey, but Mr. Spangler here showed out the first, first quarter, to say the least. A couple yeah. big tackles, fumble recovery, if I remember correctly. I took a call from the uh, Lee County radio crew during the week, and there's another bad snap this time. Monahan picks it up, throws it. That's oh, up in the dangerous. <laughs> Four jackets converge on it, but none quite able to get there for the interception. But uh, those are the first two guys I threw out about the defense, Berkey and, and uh, Spangler. Keep your eyes on those guys. Both good ball players. They get to the ball, uh, good instincts, and when they get their hands on you, you're, you're pretty much tackled. Oh, yeah. Spangler there with that big heads-up tackle on the – to get, get the turnover on downs. I don't know why I'm stuttering tonight. I apologize. Because it's cold, brother. It, it is cold. <laughs> Look, I left Louisiana about this time yesterday, <laughs> and it was 82 freaking degrees, man. It was beautiful. All right, Monahan. Oh, Another. high snap. One hands it. Nice athletic play. Now he's got it. And looking down the field, got a man. He oh, hits the oh, defense there, turned around, <laughs> and he's going to go all the way down to the 25-yard line. What a play. It didn't look like there was, didn't look like there was anything there. Number 19, Kelby Wright on the catch. This young man is 6'5", 185. I believe he used every inch of that wingspan to, to get, get open on that play. Well, and in two games, that's the first time we've seen him target Wright, and uh, he makes a play. He's a big target. Check just, that like kid out Brooks, the and just like all Brooks, who uh, had the fumble a while ago, big young man, big target, and Monahan takes advantage of it. All right, Monahan rolls to the right, just going to throw it away. Good heads-up play there. Oh. oh, goodness. I have a feeling we're going to have an intentional grounding call here. Well, and that's going to be an enormous play if that's the call. Officials are talking about it. They're getting all the input they could ever want from the UP sideline. <laughs> And they're going to they're gonna give they're the gonna penalty, which is going to cost eight yards and a loss of down. So it'll be second and 18. A dagger. But we have seen from Union Pines, they can bounce back from penalties and, and whatnot down here on this Yellow Jacket side of the field. Well, their offense is predicated on getting it into a – Oh, ineligible receiver. All right. 
I'm not 100% sure what he called there because he called two eligible receivers, did, one on it? Union Pines, one on Lee County. <laughs> not sure how you can have an eligible receiver as a defense. Uh, and then the loss of downs, which has nothing to do with an eligible receiver, is correct? Well, hold on. I think I think he, he said the same penalty twice and didn't mean to. <laughs> An ineligible receiver downfield doesn't is not loss of down. What he's going to call here is intentional grounding. No. The ineligible downfield, that penalty is declined. Yes. There it is. There we go. There we go. We're a step ahead. So that's going to be a spot foul back at the 33-yard line. It's cold to them, too. <laughs> All right. So UP moving backwards here. Well, they go five yards from the spot of the foul. My mistake. 27 seconds left in the first quarter. It's been an eventful one. Absolutely. Union Pines here second and about 23, 24. If there's one thing we can tell you about this Union Pines offense from the first quarter, though, I'm, you know, they've got something for this. Well, look how deep, big, yep, there you saw it coming. They tipped it on the, oof, Whoa. take it down around big his neck, tackle. and the official goes down hard, too. Gain of about eight on the play. Biggs wrapped up high, and the official taken out there as well. And I want you to keep your eye on something. Biggs tipped that because he was lined up so deep in his wide receiver spot. He was. All right, third and 15 after the game there. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. We've hit double zeros. We'll take a break and be back with the second, <laughs> the second quarter, excuse me, from here in Cameron, North Carolina. 90 years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fashi, and we are First Bank. Photography. Carolina Welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina here at Union Pines High School. The NFHS game of the week. Lee County versus the Union Pines Vikings. After the first quarter, Jackets lead your Vikings 14-7. to Although it's, it's been a weird first quarter. We've seen a couple of weird turnovers, a couple of uh, you know questionable penalty calls, some bad throws, some fumbles. It, all, we've been all over the place this quarter. Three minutes in, I was gonna, I was ready to start talking about cryptocurrency and <laughs> weather patterns and and the NCAA basketball tournament. No, I wasn't about to talk about that at all. <laughs> I was not. The last thing that happened before we uh, came on the air was Ohio State got knocked out by Oral Roberts, and with that, the tournament is over for me. So there you go. <laughs> Well, we had some dynamic games last night. All four of the playing oh, games man, were, were dynamic. It was awesome. Not the least of which was me going and uh, telling my wife, you can go ahead and turn it. There's no chance UCLA can come back on Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> and so and here we are. With <laughs> UCLA getting by and by a point. So there you are. But, uh, no, actually what we turned it off for was to watch the Zack Snyder Justice League cut. Have you seen that yet? No. You need to do that, sir. <laughs> you need to do that. Now we only made it. It's a, it's a four hour and seven four hour seven minute movie. Woo. But uh, if the if That's the four next, hours too long. If the next three hours are as good as the first one, um, they've done a really good job with this edit. Lee County looks like they're flipping the strength here. All right, Monahan takes a snap. Pressure coming. Swings it out of the backfield. Davis. Davis good with some space. Weaves his way and gives him a manageable fourth down. He's all the way down inside the 22-yard line. Going to be fourth and about seven. Union Pines not stuttering here. You know that they're going for it. Their kicking game has been lackluster throughout the year. We know that Coach Lonnie Cox, Coach Giggy here, offensive minds, they want points up. They want to get this this ball game tied. Well, I had, an, I had an opportunity to talk to Sean Blatz, the UP kicker. Oh, 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 five free ones is the hard count for Monaghan. Looking like the savvy vet out there right now. Sean, uh, Sean Blatz, the uh, Union Pine kicker, he'll tell you he could have got it from there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a confident young man. I liked him a lot. Did you meet him at the Zaxby's coach? I coach? sure did. He came on and was the uh, Scholar Athlete of the Week for Union Pines. You know, I, I really like that Farm Bureau is doing that now. I that is well. really cool. I agree with you, sir. 
with that penalty from the Yellow Jackets, this puts the Union Pines Vikings in the Zaxby's red zone. All right. Fourth and about two. Not going to get Davis twice. Is, Kishon Davis in the backfield. No, nope, we're not going to get him twice. All right, hands to Davis. David, nowhere to go. Nowhere. Nowhere to go. And I'm going to tell you, that's ah, that's tough. Loses a couple when the Jackets will take over going the other way. I don't know whose money you just saved there, but Nate with the, <laughs> Nate with the ninja reflexes just saved one of the many cameras that's up here on the uh, upper deck from tipping over. I don't know much about cameras, but if it says 4K, <laughs> it means I probably don't want to pay for it. <laughs> All right. Will Patterson brings McKendall in motion. Pop pass to McKendall. McKendall with space around the left. Better slow him down. McKendall gets outside. Got 15. All the way out around the 40-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. And they're going to mark him back at the 36, but that'll be enough for Lee County Yellow Jacket. First down. Tyreek McKendall going in motion there. Little... Shuttle pass, pop pass. Pop pass. Pop pass. Dead motion, how you call it. And McKendall, much like Biggs for Union Pines, is a guy that Lee County wants to get the ball into his hands. And it could be down the sideline trying to get behind coverage. It could be lining up in the backfield. It would be screens. But he is the utility guy in there. And that's T.J. Johnson. You can't give him that much space in the head of steam. Mm. Dragged down, but not until he's picked up 12 on the play, and that'll be another Lee County first down. Lee County throwing some motions into their offense here. That was Jackson Lamb in the jet motion this this previous down. So starting to get a little creative and uh, keeping the ponds on their toes. Christopher Gilbert, defensive end, chasing downfield to make the tackle. Good hustle on the play. All right, Jennings checks in at tailback again. And there's Jennings. Good patience. Ooh. Now he's room. And he'll have 17 all the way down to the 35-yard line. Lee County suddenly make it look, making it look easy in the run game. Three big plays in succession. And this is probably more what I expected to see this Lee County offense look like this week. A lot of line up and line up play, and, man and run up. it at them. I mean, always, always keep a good, you know, close side though. Coach, Coach uh, Bordeaux and all of them, they love to throw in a wrinkle all of a yes, sudden. Yes, they do. All right, this is Jennings again, dragging tacklers and then pushing the pile ahead. Gets four, second and six. Yeah, you talked earlier about the disparity in size between the Lee County offense and the and the Union Pines defense, and it's dramatic. Dramatic. <laughs> it's dramatic. You look at the front lines of the two comparable teams. I bet there's at least a 50-pound average more for the Yellow Jackets than the Vikings. All right, second and six coming up. Patterson fakes the handoff. Now looking for the screens. Got Palmer. Palmer's going to have, well, going to be close to a first down. Looks like they'll give him forward progress right to the 25-yard line. And... They're going to wave the chains forward. That's a Lee County first down. First downs this year brought to you by Pentair. Right right there by the house. Right not too far. Pentair for all your pool needs, pumps, chemicals, etc. Not too many degrees of separation. Of course, Mike Fowler, longtime Pentair employee. I talk, that almost sounds like it's past tense. Currently working for Pentair, too. He's downstairs <laughs> in the radio booth for Lee, for uh Southern Lee every week. Mike Fowler, what a great guy. What is a, tre what what a, a tremendous salt of the guy. Earth. I wish I was half the guy he was. Just never has anything <laughs> negative to say about anything. All right, eight on the carry there for T.J. Johnson, who's checked back into the game. His boys going through the Southern Lee High School football programs. Back in the day, I used to watch them run around the neighborhood when they were little kids. All right, has Palmer again. Palmer weaving. That's and a never really gets touchdown. into space, but finds a way to slip through there. On the screen, Kenyon Palmer doing a lot of that by himself. Is into the end zone. Stretches the lead to 20-7 to with 8.56 to go in the half. Here come the Yellow Jackets. Kick the PAT. Looks like 
It should be number 10, Kennedy Hernandez. He's three for four on the year coming into this game. It is. He'll line up at uh, right tackle first before they <laughs> move to that. <laughs> Reasonable. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. We talked about why doesn't Union Pines, you know, Union Pines has this cover. Well, they almost didn't. They left Jennings uncovered over there on the left side and at the last minute ran a man out there. And as they do, Lee County will move into a more traditional set. And it looks like Hernandez will kick this one through. Snap is down, kick is up, kick is good. Lee County 21-7. We'll take a break and be back with the kickoff. Number 10, Kennedy Hernandez. And the Yellow Jackets will take Nine years ago, First Bank was founded. You know First Bank, the one where you are greeted by name, the one dedicated to the community, and the one born in the heart of the Carolinas. We help our customers to realize their dreams by providing financial solutions and building trusted relationships. Hi, I'm David Fischi, and we are First Bank. Welcome back to the NFHS Game of the Week, brought to you by Wilkinson Cadillac here in Land of the Pine, Cameron, North Carolina. Yep, it's pretty predictable when you go to these Moore County schools that the uh, wherever you play at any one of these schools that there's going to be plenty of pine trees <laughs> around. Um, this we we talk about it every time we come here, and we're not just you know throwing it out there. Union Pine is really a cool place to come watch a football game. The crowd is always into it. The band is great. The field is always well kept. Um, nice venue, it really is. And then they've got the you know the digital board down on one end. Um, Really nice what they do with the program down here. All right, high spinner. And going to be caught on the run and going the other way with it. All right. First time we've seen Union Pines able to field one of those on the fly. Look like number 20, Brody Trannel there that on the kick return. I apologize. Yeah. 25, Josh Eberhardt. I was going to come in there and, and correct me yeah yeah i wouldn't right. call it that my my eyes are struggling today i guess that well, was on the far side so it's forgivable <laughs> all right micah monahan 852 to go in the second half certainly wants to answer that lee county touchdown ahmad jones by himself down here to the left three wides and a bunch up on the top side on the right throws it underneath got bigs bigs gets outside breaks contain has a block and he just outruns the defense oh <laughs> Couldn't quite get his momentum turned up the field, but all the way down to the 25, gain of 40 on the play. The unsung hero of that play there is number 44, Ahmad Jones, with a spectacular downfield block for the Vikings. Yep, and Biggs, as he came across the middle, Lee County had a shot to stop that for next to nothing and couldn't quite do it as Jennings was eluded on the tackle, and there's another bad snap. Yeah, Monahan has to dive on it, and somewhere there are offensive coaches with headsets on cursing. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. I would never know an offensive coach that would have cussed about something like that. <laughs> I can touch one from where I'm standing. <laughs> I appreciate the call out there. Union Pines here are going to be second and 21. They have got to get this worked out with their center quarterback exchange. All right, Kashawn Davis in at tailback. Second and 20. Ooh, we got a false start from the Vikings. Well, movement right up front tackle. by Lee County. And I don't think anybody came into the neutral zone, but all that might have gotten somebody's attention, and that's going to back it up, make it second and 25. I believe that penalty was on number 53, Dakota Spangler. Doing double duty. The young man's playing a heck of a defensive ball game. It's a whole lot to ask him to... Uh, Fight with the line of scrimmage against the Yellow Jackets on offense and, and even side of the ball. You know, Spangler, Spangler listed in the on the roster at um, <laughs> five nine two ten. I think that might be a little gracious. That might be a little gracious, <laughs> and he's playing guard, Nate. <laughs> he's playing guard. He's a he's a gamer. He's a tough kid. You can just tell. He is the way he plays. He's just a tough kid. Gotta love it. I love the spunky ones. Mr. Ref, can you announce that again? Eight, eight, All right, so a conversation <laughs> between the PA announcer and the, and the official. That's that's cool. 
You never know what you're going to see at high school football in North Carolina. Well, and the ask from the PA announcer and the official actually did what he asked. That was pretty cool. That was <laughs> amazing. All right, so the clock stopped at 8-10. Second and 26 now for the Vikings. Monahan surveys the defense, looking quick, and oh, the ball falls ball. out of his hands. And I think that squirted out back into the arms of a UP. Yep, Monahan's going to climb out of there with it. Third and a mile coming up. Clock running inside eight minutes, and poof, this is a bunch here. Interesting development here. Number seven, Ben Finkelstein, the backup quarterback for Monahan, coming in. Have to wonder if Monahan's hands or something's going on with his hands or something, because you don't usually see a quarterback who receives it and then fumbles it from there. So we'll watch him as he gets checked out by the Union Pine staff. And we have no stats on Mr. Finkelstein, so. Let's see what the young man has. All right, everybody else on the offense is the same same numbers we've seen all night. Finkelstein looking down for Maude Jones into double coverage. John Finkelstein gets it! it! And doesn't come up with a first down. How often do you see a pass that far down the field and not convert? <laughs> However, that'll bring up fourth and manageable as Ahmad Jones just went up and got it in between two Lee County Defenders. The throw from, from Finkelstein was less than spectacular, to say the least. Ahmad Jones just decided that ball was going to be his and he was going to go get it. Well, Finkelstein makes a couple more of those, and Monaghan might have found himself while he pipped. Too, <laughs> are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. I thought maybe you were too young to get the reference. Our producer thinks I just said something. <laughs> we can't say that on the air. Wally Pip? Yeah, go Google it. <laughs> Union Pine is trying to draw them off sides, and they want to talk about it. Coach Lonnie Cox called a timeout. Want mm -hmm. to see what Lee County is going to come out in. All right, they'll talk about it, and we'll take a quick break. You're watching the NFHS Game of the Week. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. This is the NFHS Game of the Week brought to you by Wilkinson Cadillac here again at Cameron, North Carolina. All right, Sean Blatt's on to, for the extra point here, or the extra point, for the field goal attempt. They were down around the same spot, maybe a couple yards farther out before, and went for it in a similar down and distance. Uh, this time, going to err on the side of caution, and we'll see if Blatt's can, can get it there. 35 yards. Oh, and they're going to fake it, and that thing is thrown that out there, and it's picked up, point. and that is Johnson going the other way with it. So, T.J. Johnson, I'm, Mr. Do-It-All for the Lee County Yellow Jackets. I'm not 100% sure what the goal of that was, obviously, to get a first down. Blatt's took off to the right. I think the throw was going to go out there to him in space, but the holder he wasn't able to come up with a clean, and by the time he did, the pressure was there, and he just actually made a good play to just hurl it and give somebody a chance to make a play, I think. Uh, but the design of that play... Mm -hmm. Those two fourth downs down there around the 25 are plays that are going to get a lot of looks on tape from this UP staff as they diagnose what uh, what happened in this ballgame. All right, Patterson with four wideouts. Johnson in the backfield looking down the right, left side and looking Good for Palmer. Play. Nice coverage. Underthrown a little bit by Patterson. Good coverage there. Get his head turned right at the last second, deflect that ball. I believe he hadn't got his head turned. We might see, might have seen the PI call there. But since he got his head turned, made a play on the ball. Great coverage by the Vikings. All right, Patterson, barking out signals. Takes a snap, fakes to Johnson, steps up under pressure. That's a block in the back. And there's a nice play in the backfield to bring him down. And into the backfield there for the Vikings, number 50, Christopher. Gilbert. Christopher Gilbert, not the first time that we've heard his name tonight. This Viking defense really 
holding pretty strong here. Really are. They're really, really doing a good job. I have to wonder if uh, substitutions and, and the ability to rotate players will play a facet in the second second half. But first half, this Viking defense holding strong in the Yellow Jackets. We, we also may see a different philosophy in the second half from Lee County. Um, getting getting into these long down and distances is not playing. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm going to tell you, that's Josh Berkey. Bring in the hammer. Josh Berkey. He says, I'm here to play, boys. I don't care who you are. Josh Berkey, who missed almost the entire junior season two years ago now with a torn ACL, is wearing a knee brace, which is interesting to me because he's broken two braces already this season. <laughs> he finished last week with a, uh, with a soft sleeve on the knee because he'd broken his second brace, and I wasn't sure that we'd see him back in a brace. He says he's almost 100%. And if he's not 100% now, I can't wait to see him at 100%. And I'm going to tell you, small school coaches that are watching, come see Josh Berkey. This Get is a kid. This young man can play this football. This is a kid. You want him. And tough as nails. You saw yes, him run off after the third down tackle. Gets a quick splash of water, and he is right back on the offensive line for the Union Pines. And doesn't, he doesn't do the little fat man waddle out there. He runs to his spot to play. Came over, snatched up a glass of Powerade, never hesitated, ran right back out there. All right, Monahan trailing 21-7, 5.02 left in the half. Monahan looking down the field. Nope, now checks down and has a man. And motoring all the way down, has six on the play. Big tackle trailing the play there by number 44, Del Ma Del Del Maz Jennings. He and came in good. with 17 tackles on the on the year after two games. Just added another one. Senior defensive end, 6'3", 212. Yeah, a couple Jenningses on this team. That was Kashawn Davis sneaking out of the backfield for the reception. And that was a legit check down. He was looking down the seam, Monahan was. And uh, it was well covered by Lee County. All right, second and four. And quick strike out there. Oof, through the hands of the receiver. Number 19, Chris, a quick update from around the Tri-County 6. Triton leading Southern Lee High School 19-7 in the second quarter. All right, Lee County out to a 2-1 and one start under new head coach Mike McClure. That's a game folks in Sanford love to see Southern Lee get through and get to 3-1. and one. Down early, but there's still a lot of football to be played out there. I, lo I love what Coach McClure is doing with that program. He's excited. He is. He and passionate. Oh, and I know their numbers are down, but from what I've heard from the boys, they love him. Yes, sir. All right, has his man and comes back to the football. Now puts it on the ground. And what's the call going to be? Not what's seen the, the call, call going to be? I think they're going to keep the ball going that way with Union Pines. He was close to a first down on the play. Came too far back. And came back and never got turned back around. That was Kelby Wright on the completion. And the punt team comes out. No more hijinks for Union Pines on fourth down, I think. I think this. I think they play this straight and punt it. Of course, you couldn't blame them here. Fourth and four. Um, you know, if you if you got a good fake punt, this is the place to run it. Yeah, with 3.30, with 3.25 left in going into the half, Union Pines is kicking off the second half, correct? Yes, they are. I think. Uh, and it's a short snap and the pitch. And, and he's got Biggs, room. And Biggs has got run, got room to run, <laughs> and he'll convert it. <laughs> Needed four, picks up 14 on the fake punt. I was just about to tell you how bad of an idea that was. <laughs> and, and again, I am proven wrong. Well, it's a good thing you're up here with me <laughs> and, and not misdirecting there. young men down there in, <laughs> on the sideline. That I like that design. I like that. Kind of ran the option out of the uh, out of the pump formation, and kind of predictable. Lee County Lee County smelled it out. They just couldn't do anything about it. And if you're gonna you know if you're gonna run a fake in the kicking game, get it to your best athlete, and that's what they did. All right, Monahan needs to take advantage here. 249, fakes to Davis. Here's the pressure, and he goes down. Great play. Along the defensive line there, jo Josiah Sauls. 
Yellow Jackets, number 54, Darren McCoy. Darren, Darren McCoy. McCoy. switching numbers on me. There's a name that we, we heard many times last year, Mr. Darren McCoy, senior, 6'3", 215. Any word on his recruiting? Have no, you heard sir. anything? No, I haven't heard I anything haven't about any of these young men yet. Um, Lee County, we talked in the opening about the strength of this junior class, and you'll hear the Clemsons and the Carolinas and, and everybody else associated with them. The senior class that they have, Ma Jones gets it. He gets back almost to the original line of scrimmage, third down coming up. This senior class that's there is interesting. Um, probably not some big time D1 prospects coming out of this class, but there are four or five guys that should play football on Saturdays. Um, McCoy being one of those guys. Absolutely. Jackson Lamb being another. Um, it's a it's a a group that's uh, full of, of scrappy football players that may be a little undersized or a step slow, um, but should get a look somewhere. All right, third and twelve. Clock stopped as Union Pine staff attends to a player that's down. Well, looks like he's going to get up and make it off. That's Ahmad Jones, and they can ill afford to lose him. We'll stay right here. Big round of applause Number from both sides of the. Jones. The crowd. I was interested to see how many Lee County folks were going to make the trip down. Predictably, it's a light crowd. First of all, we still have the restrictions in place, masks everywhere, and it is cold. It is cold. Cold. For late March in North Carolina in this part of the state, it's cold. And it came out of nowhere. It had been so nice. And this just out of nowhere. Pow. Chris, what, what are the new restrictions? Because last I heard it was 100, and then Governor Cooper – did some stuff and I'm not sure what all what all inspired so give us a quick update on, on all that to the best of my knowledge right now we're at 20 percent okay and I know that the Lee County schools are only doing online sales for tickets so you have to have it in advance so they can manage the number of people to get in all right down the sideline looking and throws it Lee County defender that was Jackson Lamb comes up with it but he's out of bounds and we'll have another fourth down on this end of the field oh, seems like this will be the, I don't know the fourth or fifth one at least <laughs> Jackson Lamb, one of those players we were just talking about who, who some small school is going to get a gym when they bring him in. He's a young man that in the last couple of years, you know, even for that state championship runner-up team for Lee County, with all of the heralded big-time names going to these D1 programs, Jackson Lamb always was a playmaker um, on those teams. Absolutely. We, we saw him at the coach show more times than once for player of the week. Yes, sir. And he plays all over the defense. Plays some safety. They'll line him up in the slot as a corner. On offense, you'll see him as a uh, as a wide receiver from time to time. Good ball player. All right, Monahan under pressure needs to get it out of there. And throws it, brought in, but it's going to be short, and that'll turn it over. Lee County going the other way. All right, so this Lee County defense bending but not breaking, over and over again has allowed Union Pines down deep into into. Uh, Jacket territory, but has only given up the one touchdown. I think one thing that really needs to be talked about here is Uni Pines offense has consistently made plays, consistently marched ball down the field, but their center quarterback exchange and penalties have really hurt the, this Viking offense. I, there's no reason this should be at least a 14 21 ball game, if not a 21 21 ball game. Chris. Uh, nothing that you just said that, that I can argue with. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. And Union Pines, if they can figure out a way to, to get out of their own way in the second half, can can really push this Lee County team. Looking for a man is Kenyon Palmer, who drops it. Oh, right in the Palmer, basket. who might have just run on into the end zone, was at max speed and kind of stumbled a little bit as he got, a, got into top gear there. But the ball hit him in the hands. Great throw by Patterson. Palmer's going to he, – he's not going to forget that one. You know, it's easy sometimes to, to forget Patterson's arm strength he put that ball in the basket. Talking to the Lee County staff all the way back to last year, you, you, if you remember, there were some illness issues late in the season with Colin Johnson in the playoffs. He had the flu, right? And everybody in town wanted to know, well, who's going to play quarterback? Who's going to play quarterback? And the Lee County staff kind of laughed at it and was like, what do you mean? We have <laughs> the backup quarterback. We have the guy that's behind Colin Johnson, and he's solidly implanted. They, they have never had any doubt about Will Patterson's arm talent. All right, we'll take a quick break and be back with the uh, finale of the first half right after this break. WilkinsonCars.com. Come visit us at our new location in Sanford. With the same great staff and the same great service, test drive one of our many different vehicles. 
check out our state-of-the-art service department and collision center, where our team can have you back on the road in no time. We're right across from Walmart at 3335 North Carolina 87 South. Schedule your appointment online at wilkinsoncars.com right. or call us at 919-842-3322. Okay. We guarantee. Welcome back to Cameron, North Carolina. Lee County going to second and 10 here. All right, Jackson Lamb on the out. Kicks about half of that up. Right, they're going to mark him out after a gain of three. So big third down. And that stopped the clock. And that's, that, that's a big deal. Absolutely. Because now if Lee County doesn't, convert Union Pines with a couple of timeouts left will have a chance to strike back Patterson in this Lee County offense got other other plans they'd like to pick this up and, and get a chance for them to score themselves and Union Whoa. Pines <coughs> wow with the offsides penalty there it's gonna make it a little bit easier number 52 there I don't have a 52. I've got a 53. I got a Mr. Spangler at 53. I don't think it was it a was not. Man, it though. was not Spangler for sure. Nope. All right. So third and two now. Patterson, screen. Palmer breaks oh. out of a tackle, and he's down the left sideline doing damage. Cuts it back upfield, and will be dragged down at the 19. Union Pines had him dead to rights. Short of the first down. Union Pines brought the pressure right up the middle there. Lee County sniffed it out. Got, got the ball to Palmer in space. Broke a guy. It became a track meet. Palmer run down, but not until he picked up 43 on the play. First and 10 right outside the 20-yard line. Clock running at 102. Lee County with only one timeout left. So time is a factor. Here goes Johnson around the right side with a head of steam. And plows over people down. There's a flag comes in late. That's in the area holding. So gain a seven on the play, but hold everything as we sort out this flag. Don't mean to step on toes here, Chris. Lee County with two timeouts left. Union Pines with one. Oh, I had that flip. My mistake. Good pick up there. Way to bail me out. Definitely in the vicinity of hold. All right, and this is spot foul, which happened right back at the line of scrimmage. So this is going to... Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll replay first down, first and 15 for the Yellow Jackets on Union Pines 25. Definitely an offense that can, that can make this up pretty quick, though. All right, Patterson hands to Johnson again. Johnson, Spangler drags him down, what making a play. plays. Clock running inside 45 seconds. There's a timeout from the Lee County sideline. They'll get a stop with 41 to go. Dakota Spangler making plays. And I'm going to tell you what, Dakota Spangler's probably given up 40 pounds to A.J. Johnson. But like I said, when he gets his hands on you, you're tackled. He is without a doubt, you, you spoke on this earlier, any Division II, you know, Division Three coaches, Catawbas, Mars Hills, if you haven't come down to Cameron, North Carolina, and seen this young man yet, you need to. He is a ball player. Yep, and if you play your cards right, you can get you a twofer. Elaborate. I like Berkey. I like Berkey and Spangler. I mean, if you're going to come get one, come get both of them. Why not? I mean, they'd be a credit to any any program. They're the type of kids that will play special teams without batting an eye and, and play wherever you want them and, and do what you want to in your scheme. And from having talked to the coaching staff here, both very – intellectually strong kids, academics would not be an issue. Act, absolutely. All right, 41 seconds to go, second and 14 from the 24-yard line. Patterson, a little bit of movement. Johnson right up the middle. Ooh. Cuts it down inside the 10, and that'll be a first down. Clock running inside 35. They'll wind the clock once they get the chain set. Lee County needs to hurry up here. 30, and they're running. 33 seconds to go. Still barking out signals. Might have wanted to get a timeout there. They're going to be down inside 25 as the ball snapped. Hands to Johnson again. Johnson going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Lee County. And I tell you, that Ooh, it hadn't been, hadn't been easy all night for Lee County, it seemed. That was a little too simple there to put a cap on that drive and stretch it out to 27-7 with 19 seconds to go in the half, and that one's going to be that one's going to sting going into yes. halftime. 
Yes, it will. Union Pines really on their on their heels there. Lee County just able to just muscle the ball right in. I thought with 20 some odd seconds left, 10 yards ago, I thought they're gonna need to throw the ball here. Nope, Mr. T.J. Johnson has plans otherwise. All right, and for those of you watching that are wondering what Lee County's doing, they're counting heads. And if you do, if you don't account for the wide receiver or the guy that's lined up out to the left, they'll snap the ball and they'll throw it out there to him. If they have a three or fewer defenders in front of the center, the other lineman and the two backs that are in there, they'll use the matchup and they'll run it on you four and three or four on two. Um, but if you line up straight, they'll move into extra point formation and they'll kick the extra point. And Hernandez, really kind of money. Yeah. And, and big shoes to fill. From Mr. Underwood. Yeah, Trey Underwood, Trey man. Underwood. In the state record book, he's a top 10 all-time scorer in New North Carolina high school football history. But uh, haven't missed a beat so far with Hernandez in there. Mr. Trey Underwood, did he end up going and playing college ball anywhere, or is he just an academic? I'll have to dig into that. I don't know the answer to that question either. I don't either. Lee County's pumped a, a hand, more than a handful of kickers into the college ranks. Yes. As a county, a couple of young men, not the least of which is uh, Richard McCollum, who is at Western Carolina right That's now. That's right. And I still say North Carolina blew it not bringing him in. <laughs> Larry Fedora. And you got to admire, Richie actually went on to, uh, onto the set of the coaches show uh, with Larry Fedora and, and basically challenged him. <laughs> and they North Carolina still didn't bring him in. He went to Western. Where he broke in, he ended up being the starting kicker by the end of his, his uh, freshman year. All right, a little spinner. They're going to be offsides. That'll back him up five yards, and we'll do it again. Clock's still showing 19 seconds. I still keep up with Richard from time to time. I coached him in multiple sports through multiple phases of his life and uh, loves Western Carolina. Honestly feels very blessed to be there. Feels like he's definitely an asset to the team. Loves the academics up there. Loves Cullowee, North Carolina. Could not be happier. And he was a legacy kicker. His older brother wound up at Wingate, if I have that Wingate, right. Wingate, you are correct. Yeah. When Wingate in Union County, North Carolina, I believe, just outside of Charlotte. Don't 100% hold me to that, but I'm fairly confident that's where that is. All right, Lee County lined up again to kick it off. Now that you've given up five yards, does this change your? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> High spinner brought in and tackled immediately around midfield. They put him at the 49-yard line. Union Pines will have a shot if they want to want to take a shot down the field. And I don't know why not. Down 21 at the end of the second half with the ball going back to Lee County to open the open the second. Chris, if you're Union Pines here, what's the first play you dial up? Right here. Right here. Um. I don't know. I mean, you don't want to make a mistake, so I would I would stay away from the screen. It's, as silly as that sounds, there's too many opportunities for that thing to get popped up into the air. I would really try to stretch it down the field, but that pass rush right there makes it really <laughs> tough. So I don't know, um, to be honest. If you've got some kind of double reverse in the playbook, but then you're back into the, you know, you can make a mistake and turn that thing over. It's tough when you can't protect, and Monahan is, is right now facing a pass rush. It's got their ears pinned back. Uh, so it's a tough he's spot to be in. He's running for his life at this point. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. That's why, you know, it was important for them to stay in good, positive down and distance. And when they've done that, they've been effective. When they haven't, it's been it's been a little tougher. Monahan throwing it down the right sidelines. Got a man who reels it. Oh, oh. Kelby Wright with a chance to make a one-handed catch there and unable to bring it in. That was huge. Big target there of Kelby Wright. Would have liked to see that ball thrown a little bit closer to the sideline and let Mr. Kelby Wright go up and fight for that one. When you got a target that's 6'5", you've got to let the boy go. Now, what I have what I have not seen yeah. Union Pines do that I would like to, and maybe this is the, is the spot for it, they try to get their receivers down the field outside. I'd like to see them line bigs up in, a, in the slot and challenge the safety yeah, right down the field at full speed. All right, Union Pines, after the incompletion on first down, decides to take a knee, and that'll bring us to the end of the first half. Of the Lee quarter. County, 28, Union Pines, 7. We'll be back on the other side of the break.
Visit us online at ClassicNissanCenter.com or call 1-855-461-9595. Classic Nissan Sanford. Welcome to the Classic Nissan Halftime Report. Welcome to the Classic Nissan Halftime Show here at Cameron, North Carolina. If I botched that, I apologize. Chris, give us a quick update what you what you've seen so far between the Union Pines Vikings and the Yellow Jackets. Union Pines has played really well in bursts. Lee County with a little bit of head scratching going on here in our from our vantage point as to what they were trying to do on offense early. They got a couple breaks. Um, Union Pines struggled with the snap. They turned the ball over. Lee County capitalized. Looked, to be honest, like they were going to run away and hide. Union Pines, however, no change in the body language from, from the opening gun of this ball game. These kids are here to play. Um, we see the defense continuing to play downhill. They're going to continue to challenge them, and I don't think that they'll stop um, until we reach double zeros at the end of the fourth quarter. However, that size differential on both sides of the line is starting to show itself. We saw at the end of the first half, Lee County able to get traction in the running game. T.J. Johnson just going straight up the middle. Um, nothing cute about it. And when you're, you know, when the first guy that gets a crack at him is seven yards downfield, that's problematic. And on the other side of the ball, at this point, that offensive line for Union Pines, who's doing double duty, it's all guys that are playing on the other side of the ball, is really starting to wear out. Lee County knows what the score is, and they're pinning their ears back, and they're really giving Monahan fits. And it's going to be very difficult for Union Pines to, to overcome. Now, I'll go back to earlier in the week. I've talked to a dozen people about this game, and they asked, does Union Pines have a shot? Sure, if they play a clean game. They haven't played a clean game. Bad penalties, turnovers, bot snaps, a um, couple of calls, in the, not even necessarily in the red zone, but in plus territory on fourth down. A couple of calls I think that the staff might like to have back. You've got to capitalize. Now, if you go reset a couple of those, we've got a real competitive ball game because Lee County has not gotten untracked. And folks that were critical of Lee County after the Overhills game, which they got out of with a win, said this offense is not where it needs to be yet. Well, of course it's not. It was week two <laughs> coming out of uh, COVID lockdown and everything else with a brand new starting quarterback. I don't know what people expected to see. We've watched a lot of football up to this point. We haven't seen anybody's offense that's coming out clicking. All of the, uh, all of the tape, all of the meetings, all of the discussions don't make up for the reps that have been lost up to this point. I mean, we saw Harnett Central last week with arguably as good a talent as anybody in this conference. The offense couldn't get out of its own way. Yep. So Lee County and Union Pines are both ahead of that. And you can see all of the talent that's loaded up on that Yellow Jacket offense. If and when they get it sorted out, they can beat just about anybody. Union Pines is a, is a different situation. They don't have the big, fast athletes that Lee County does, but they've got really heady football players. But in a matchup like this, you've got to get them and keep them in positive situations and put them in the right, you know, in a position to succeed. And we didn't see quite enough of that in the first half. Um, if Union Pines can come out and play clean, they can keep this thing close. The idea that they're going to come back out and, and outscore Lee County by at least three touchdowns, tough to kind of wrap your mind around. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think you hit on on everything that I had mentally prepared for for this halftime show. Um, in discussion with a couple of coaches prior to, you know, everyone thought Union Pines could compete, but they had to play a perfect ball game. For them to win this ball game, they had to be perfect. And so far, we've seen a, a very exciting Viking offense. Sure. Like last week, we were talking about if, if they don't do something different, it's going to get ugly. And so, great job by the Vikings and the Viking coaching staff and athletes. But they they haven't played a perfect ball game. You talked about the penalties. You talked about the bad snaps which is still an ongoing issue. We, we've seen a bunch of bad snaps throughout the night. So some cleanup to do for the Vikings. I don't know if they have enough gumption to get it back through the second half, make this a, a tie ball game or pull out a win. But nonetheless, I think it'll be exciting to watch. Well, and I'm certainly not ready to give up on this game yet. And let's keep this in context. What we're seeing from the Union Pines offense tonight, miles better than what we saw a doubt. the other night, where basically they had to get the ball short to one of, one of two receivers and let them make plays in space, with one exception, and that was Biggs on the big 60-yard touchdown down the left side. Other than that, it was tunnel screen, tunnel screen, tunnel screen was all that was effective. Tonight we're seeing the crossing routes. Tonight we're seeing other receivers get involved in the offense. The other teams in this conference have got to take note, and there's a lot of talk, a lot of speculation. Well, 
if you lose a ball game, you may not make the playoffs. Well, if you lose a ball game to one of the top 10 3A programs in the state, there's only so much that can be held against you. Yep. And a team like Union Pines got past Harnett Central. Now, did Harnett Central play an ugly game? They certainly did, but a W is a W. Union Pines, if they continue to progress and they continue to expand this offense, this defense and an, an improving offense, it's not hard to see them running the table the rest of the way. And, and they've got to get out of their head, well, one loss is out of the playoffs because that's not the case. That's true. It is much more difficult this year than it has been in the past to get in as a second team in a conference. But there are going to be number two teams coming in, out of those conferences. And if you run the table and your only conference loss is to Lee County, Union Pines is going to have a chance to play football. Now, that's way ahead of where we're at right now. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're you know, that's a month from now. Yep. But you have to look at it that way because Lee County – the last few years has dominated this conference. Union Pines is one of the teams that has crept up in and, and really has solidified a spot as a team that is playing for that second spot. And in the right year, they'll knock off Lee County. So we're, we're there. And, and then that said, that brings in a whole nother conversation about the realignment that come next year. But we're certainly not going <laughs> to reset that again. I got more phone calls and texts about that than, than I cared to, to field. But Tri-County 6, this is the last year of the conference. Union Pines, um, from what I've seen this year, I think you can make a really good case that they're the second-best team in the conference. Um, a lot of people coming into the year thought Harnett Central was that school. Harnett Central may have the second-best group of athletes, but they came in tonight 0-3. Yep. And, you know, the best athletes in the world, I mean, you can, you can win the bus test, but when, the, you know, when it all said and done, it's all about who's putting up more points than the others. Now, we'll keep a close eye on Southern Lee because Southern Lee is, is a wild card in this mix. You know, they got their first conference win. They had a very winnable game tonight against Triton, and uh, we, we got to keep, keep a close eye on that. Last time we heard, they were still down 19-7 to at, at, at the half. So we'll keep a close eye on and keep all of our fans at home updated through that process. All right, and no B.J. Brown tonight for Lee County, which leads me to believe that he's still a little banged up. Um, it's been T.J. Johnson with uh, Jennings coming in to get a couple of carries, but I think you'll see a lot of T.J. Johnson until if and when this gets out of, out of hand. But T.J. Johnson um, doing the, the lion's share of the carries tonight. Jennings came in, had the fumble, um, and haven't seen a whole lot of him since. And, and frankly, Johnson's just been really, really effective, which is of no surprise. Also has an interception on defense, uh, just kind of doing it all. Anything else you want to add before we uh, wrap this up? Want to make sure we, we thank our sponsors here, Classic Nissan, for sponsoring our halftime show. Last week or two weeks ago, y'all were there with the Zaxby's Coaches Show. Looked like an immaculate facility. Absolutely love it over there. It so is. Bruce Reeves, Bruce Reeves, the general manager over there, is a, is a fun guy to be around. That's a, that's a great place. Um, if you want to talk Lee County football, that's a great place to be, too, because <laughs> you got some Lee County parents over there with, with guys that have come through this program. So I really enjoy being over there. This week... We will be back at Wilkinson Cadillac for the coaches show. So Monday at 7 o'clock, we'll have the coaching staff from Union Pine, Lee County, and Southern Lee out there, along with players of the game on both sides of the ball and the scholar athletes and some chicken. And it's a really good time. Tune in, and uh, there are worse things you could be doing on a Monday night. For Absolutely. Sure. All right, that'll, that'll put a bow on this. Um, you want to take us out? Absolutely. This has been the Classic Nissan Halftime Show. We'll catch you on the other side for the second half here in Cameron, North Carolina. Nissancenter.com or call 1-855-461-9595. Classic Nissan Sanford. Sir. I was expecting that to be a, be a punt and, and a uh, few the hand of Johnson way too much space. Untouched until he gets about eight yards down the field. Union Pine stacks him up there. But that's a good first down gain for the Jackets. 
Lee County so far has not lined up and just done that. It's kind of what we keep saying we're anticipating and that will make an appearance at some point in time. Up three scores, you know you can run the ball. Sometimes you want to just go ahead and get out of here with the win and move on. All right, from the spread all night, hand this to Johnson. Johnson runs through a tackle at the line of scrimmage and then runs over another tackle. Needed two, picks up three, maybe four, and that'll be a jacket first down. First downs this year brought to you by Pintair. Lee, right. Lee County getting in the play, taking their sweet time. We, we've got the play clocks on tonight, just not being used. Watching the back judge, eating some clock. All right, four wideouts. We've seen most of the night. Patterson fakes it to the left, comes back to the right oh. to McKendall. McKendall had, oof, look at that tunnel. When you say tunnel screen, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's supposed to look like. That tunnel was there. <laughs> and McKendall had his eyes upfield before he brought it in and let it hit the ground. Incompletion brings up second and ten. I don't think he'd still be running, but I think he would have been stopped by space, not by a person if he'd, <laughs> if he'd caught that. Lee County lining up and trips to the wide side. Ooh. Pressure coming. Oh, and they pick it up. Pitches it outside. This is this oh. JoJo Jennings on the carry. Bringing Gets the hammer. 13 and leveled a Union Pines defender at the end of that run. It was number two from Union Pines, number 52 from Union Pines again. Didn't get his shoulder pad level low enough, I guess. Boy, oh, he's going to feel that one in the morning. And the senior bag Jennings doing us a favor wearing the orange shoes tonight. Easy to pick out. I like that. It's always, it's always good. Patterson drops. Looking. Oh, down the field. They fake the screen. Jackson Lamb. Is that Lamb into the end zone? I believe it I is. I believe it is. Fake the screen. Union Pines bit. And Jackson Lamb ran right past him. We talked about him making plays. He's a playmaker day in and day out. He's, you know, he's not going to pop out on any score sheets or anything. But when you need to play, this young man is always available to do it. And Union Pines bit on the tunnel there. They they ran what's called a tunnel. Lee County ran what's called a tunnel.